Hey guys, it's Sunday night. It's time for our capsule sermon. Tonight we're going to be in 1 Kings chapter 18 and chapter 19. So I encourage you to read both of those chapters on your own so that you have a full understanding of what's going on in this story. I'm fixing to kind of just breeze through and kind of go over real quick with you guys. So what's going on in this story is Elijah is a prophet of God. He's been sent to the nation of Israel to tell them to turn from their wicked ways and to to go back to God. But they're under the control of King Ahab and and Queen Jezebel. And they are worshippers of Baal, a false god and a false idol. And what Elijah does is he comes in there and he's got to be so full of faith that it's just boiling out of him. And he says to these 450 prophets of Baal, these false prophets, he says... I want to challenge you guys to a duel. I want to put the true God, the true living God against your God and let's see whose God is real. He tells these guys, all right, y'all go pick out two bulls. And once you've got two bulls picked out, you pick out whichever one of those bulls you want to offer to Baal and then you give me the other one. And what I want you to do is you build an altar, you, you cut up your bull, you put him on the altar and you make your sacrifice to Baal. The only thing is, is you cannot set it on fire. You have to get Baal to come down from wherever he's at and light the fire for you. So these guys, you know, they pick out a bull. They get him cut up. They get him set on their their wood pile. And they dance around and they sing and they do all kinds of stuff trying to get Baal to light this fire. And old Elijah, he pokes them a little bit. He ribs them a little bit. He says, he tell you what. Maybe he's on vacation up there. Maybe he's gone on a trip. He might even be asleep. Maybe you just need to hoop and holler a little more, sing a little louder. So they get louder and they start cutting their cells with knives and swords and all kinds of stuff, but nothing ever happens. And as the day dwindles down, when it gets about to the evening time, Elijah says, now it's my turn. So he stacks up 12 stones, one to represent each tribe of Israel. He puts some wood on there. He cuts up his bull and lays it on there. And he digs a big trench all the way around it. And he tells these other guys, get these buckets of water and dump it on here. and Get it good and wet. They dump so much water that it runs through the, through the wood, out on the ground, and fills up the trench all the way around it. And then he prays and he calls on God to, to, to start this fire, to, to start the offering, the sacrificial fire. And immediately, boom, it lights up and and consumes that bull. So you would think going from a moment like that, that you would be, you know, you'd be on top of the world. Nothing could make you ever doubt whether God was behind you or with you. But in that same chapter of 18 and 19, those chapters, as soon as that happens, he finds out that Jezebel has sent some people to kill him. And he begins to run and he flees into the mountains. And that's where we're going to pick up is in chapter 19, verse 9. And it says, And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Now, what I want us to pick up from this story is he went from a high, knowing that God could do anything and would do anything for him and through him, to hiding, to running and hiding in a cave because he didn't think God was going to protect him. And how many times have we been in that situation in our own lives? We go from a high point of in our faith, we're like, Man, God is good. He has blessed me with this. He has done this for me. He has has answered my prayers to maybe that afternoon or the next day or a week later. We're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, we don't even ask God for help. We, we, We try to fix things on our own. We go to other people for advice. How many times in our own lives have we gone from a high point of faith to a low point of faith that God's going to be there for us? If you read the rest of this, you find out that God says you're not alone. He's always there with you. He also tells him that there, there was people back there with bended knees praying to me after you left because you showed them who I was, because you, you gave them hope again. So guys, keep that in mind that no matter how alone you feel, no matter how isolated you feel or how much in trouble you feel like you are, you are not alone. God is with you all the time. You just have to seek him and you have to have faith 
that he's going to be there to take care of you in whatever the situation is. Now, what God does to take care of us may not be what we think needs to happen, but he's always there to watch over us and keep us safe. Guys, I love you. God bless you. Y'all keep praying.